Um, what I'd like to touch on in this presentation today is uh, some discussion of uh, some of the evidence-based strategies that we try to use to increase breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer screening, ways we integrate cancer screening with other publicly funded health programs, how we apply relevant, relevant research to local cancer prevention and control needs, and how we partner with other federal agencies. As you see from this slide, CDC actually administers four national programs, and three of those are highlighted on this, on this slide, and those are the three that I'll talk about today. I'd like to give a little bit of background, though. Um, the majority of funding that we provide at CDC is provided to health departments. We fund states, tribes, and territories to apply scientific advances in the community to develop strong cancer prevention and control programs. We do this by working uh, in four different domains, and these are not listed on the slide, but I did want to run through these quickly because I think it gives a little bit of perspective of, of how CDC does its work and particularly how state health departments do their work. Uh, the first area we try to work in is around epidemiology and surveillance, and we try to use that as the basis for which we set priorities and define our work. The second area is around environmental approaches. These are essentially policy changes that are put into place in various settings that are designed, as we like to say, to, to help make the healthy choice the easy choice. The third area we work in is health systems interventions. These are interventions to promote health and support and reinforce I'm sorry, these are interventions to improve the delivery of clinical and other preventive services. And the final area we work in at CDC is community clinical linkages. And these are linkages that allow us to increase support for self-management of chronic conditions. And so a good example of that is some of the work we do around working with cancer survivors and trying to link cancer survivors in the clinical community to the community resources that they need. Ultimately, we aim to translate research, like the work that Dr. Croyle just spoke about, into public health practice. CDC supports a wide variety of programs, initiatives, and campaigns and has extensive public health research portfolio. I'm not going to be able to speak about all of these today, but this slide is put here to just give you a sense of some of the wide variety of activities our division supports. So one program that I'd like to highlight, which I think has a direct influence on meeting the healthy Healthy People Objectives is CDC's National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. This program currently provides low-income, uninsured, and underserved women access to timely breast and cervical cancer screening and diagnostic services. We've been operating this program for two decades, and in that time we've, we've developed significant capacity in state health departments to provide public health approaches to cancer screening and to offer screening services. We're very, very proud of the success of, of these programs. We actually think that they, they've had perhaps some to do with some of the parity in screening that Dr. Sondig mentioned earlier amongst uh, various racial and ethnic uh, groups. Since 1991, the program has provided more than 10 million breast and cervical cancer screening examinations. In the program, we've diagnosed more than 55,000 breast cancers and more than 3,000 invasive cervical cancers. Also, in addition to screening, the program allows all 50 states to use a Medicare, uh, I'm sorry, a Medicaid coverage option that allows them to provide treatment to women screened positive through the breast and cervical cancer program so that they can then go on and receive the very important diagnostic and treatment services that they need. Now, this slide is, is very important to us at CDC because it gets a little bit into what we see as some of the future roles of public health and cancer screening and some of the objectives that we really, some of the approaches that we really help will, really think will help us meet uh, these objectives. We believe that implementation of the Affordable Care Act will clearly benefit the populations that we've traditionally served through this program. Uh, the act will increase insurance coverage and it will require coverage for breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer screening without cost sharing. So we think with full implementation of the act, we'll see significant benefits to the population we serve as far as screening numbers. But ultimately what we see here is an opportunity to really build on the existing capacity we put into place in state health departments and some of the extent, extensive clinical networks so that we can develop some new approaches to increase participation in cancer screening. These are population-based approaches uh, that we think are particularly important in enhancing participation uh, for underserved populations, and they're, they're captured here in this slide. Uh, uh, these approaches, approaches include public education, care coordination, quality assurance, surveillance and monitoring, and development of highly organized screening systems. We believe it's these kinds of approaches that will build on the benefits of the Affordable Care Act and will help us contribute significantly to reaching the objectives of Healthy People 2020. 
This slide uh, is an overview of our most recent screening program, the Colorectal Cancer Control Program, uh, which is our, our newest addition to our portfolio of screening services. This program has been um, organized in a slightly different way in keeping with, with some of the objectives I talked about in the last slide. Uh, and so we, we created this program in 2009, and it was put into place with a, with a distinct emphasis on uh, promoting population-based approaches to colorectal cancer screening. So we require our grantees to use at least two-thirds of their funding to take these kinds of population-based approaches, and then we allow them to use about a third of the funding to actually pay for clinical services. Given the low rates of screening participation, even in currently insured populations, we believe that this kind of population-based approach will really contribute significantly to helping us increase rates of participation in colorectal cancer screening and ultimately meeting the objectives of 2020. I wanted to hit briefly on a couple of innovative approaches we've tried to foster at CDC, and, and this is really along the line of trying to develop more organized approaches to cancer screening that I mentioned is one of the main areas of emphasis as we move forward. I'd like to highlight uh, two programs we've funded. The first is Minnesota. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Health is collaborating with their state Medicaid th program through funding from CDC to increase screening among the state's unscreened Medicaid beneficiaries. They're doing this by using direct mail reminders and then in kind of an interesting twist by using modest financial incentives to get people to participate from the Medicaid population. Another example is the New York State Department of Health. Um, New York State Health Department is partnering with uh, a group of federally qualified health centers across the state to develop screening registries so that in each of the federally qualified health centers, they can actually track the patients in their practice that have, that have been in for screening versus the patients that are actually eligible to be screened and then take measures to try to bring those people in if they're not participating. We think these kinds of really highly organized approaches are the types of things that, are, that will help us meet the the objectives of Healthy People 2020 and really bump up screening rates, particularly for breast and cervical cancer screening, where our participation is already quite robust. So we need some of these more organized approaches if we want to reach even further into those populations. I'd like to briefly talk about um, some of the work that we do with federal partners, particularly the National Cancer Institute, uh, to meet the Healthy People 2020 objectives. A, a very good example of this is our collaboration uh, together with NCI to work uh, on the Cancer Prevention and Control Research Network. And this is a network of uh, community-based participatory cancer research centers uh, that are situated across 10 academic centers. This network provides a very important infrastructure for us to apply relevant research to local cancer prevention and control needs. And the network aims to provide expertise for research supporting, uh, provide more evidence-based approaches that we can use to uh, further define the uh, areas available for, for, for population-based interventions that we, we seek uh, from the Guide to Community Preventive Services. This is just a quick example from Washington University of the kind of work that these research networks do. This is a study that uh, Washington University did tapping into the work of United Way's 2-1-1 call system. This is a system people can call into for help with a variety of needs for essential services like food and shelter, and what Washington University did was tied in a component to try to help people uh, gain better access to screening services. And as you see from the slide, uh, we saw significant improvements uh, when, when this line was used together with follow-up um, follow verbal referrals and uh, follow-up from patient navigator. And next slide. So I'd like to close by discussing something that we think is one of the most important factors in tracking our progress in meeting the Healthy People 2020 objectives, and this is having good data to track our progress. Centers for Disease Control and the National Cancer Institute collaborate to produce cancer incident data for the entire nation. The National Cancer Institute supports the Surveillance, Epidemiology, and End Results Program, also known as SEER, which funds cancer registries in 10 states, six metropolitan areas, and the Alaska Native Tumor Registry. And then CDC supports the National Program of Cancer Registries, which basically supports cancer registries in the remaining states. Through these two registry programs, which, which we do a very good job of collaborating to combine, we're able to really uh, produce a census of all of the cancer cases across the United States. This allows us to track our progress with the Healthy People 2020 objectives, but it also allows us to do extremely important work around looking at the reach and quality of cancer uh, services across the nation.